Okay, question 10 and on to some financial maths. This is actually quite a tricky question, but we'll go through it in a lot of detail. So firstly, it says a company sold shares at a fixed price of 875 Rand 50 per share over, 80, over five years, right? So what's important here is that you need to note that the price is staying the same over the five years, important. Then it says a minimum guaranteed interest rate earned over the five-year period is 6.7% per annum compounded quarterly. So we know that our denominator is going to be divided by four, okay, because it's quarters. Colleen purchased 10 shares every quarter over the five-year period. Her first purchase was at the end of the first quarter. So we know that it's in arrears and not advanced, so we don't have to mix anything up. So then it says determine the percentage minimum profit on the total cost of the shares bought um, at the end of the five-year period. So when it says at the end of a period, you should be thinking, ah, oh, future value. Now, if you're like, ooh, what's future value? Go to your beautiful formula sheet, and here is your future value and present value formula. So this is the one we're going to use, right? So I'm just going to write it here so that we have it. F equals X, 1 plus I to the power of N minus 1 over I. Okay, so... We know that she's, she's purchasing, right, every quarter. She has a, an interest rate that is also quarterly. So we know that those two things are matching, which is fantastic. They always have to do that. So what is her, um, her quarterly investment? Well, it's this, but times by 10, because she's buying 10 shares every quarter. So you have to say 875.5, but times that by 10, because that's what she's buying every quarter. Then we have to say, well, one plus I, right and what is our i value it's 0 0.067 over 4 and what is our exponent our exponent there or our time period there is going to be five years but timed by four because we are working in quarters and remember there's that matching principle right your interest rates and your time period and your installments must all have the same frequency okay minus one and we're going to put it over 0 0.067 over four. Now you could be saying, but why are you using that interest rate? Well, two reasons. It's the only one given, but also that was the minimum guaranteed interest rate. It's how asked here for the minimum profit. The minimum profit is going to be when we get the minimum guaranteed. So now we're going to go and plug this into our calculator. Now, the biggest thing here, right, is making sure that you plug this into your calculator correctly, okay? I'm not going to spend ages going how going through how to plug this into your calculator, but please make sure that you are putting your brackets correctly. So there's a large bracket here, right? This exponent applies to this whole bracket. This is a denominator to this whole top piece here, this numerator. So make sure you put that in correctly. And if you put it in correctly, this is the answer that you should get. Okay, so that is your future value, right, for the five years that she um, invests in this share scheme, right? But now we need to say, well, this is what she gets at the end. That's not necessarily her profit. And they've asked here specifically about profit. So we need to make sure and say, okay, well, how much did she invest then, right? And how much of this is profit? Well, we know that what she invests, right, what she invests would be the 875.5 times by 10, that's what she does every quarter. And how many quarters were there? Five times four. So you put that into your calculator, right? And that will give you 175100. So that's what she invests, okay? This is the total return, including her initial investments, well, her, her installment investments. So her profit is just going to be the 205973 0.485 minus what she's actually put in because that's your profit if you put that in your calculator right it will give you 3073.485 okay so that's her profit but did it ask merely for her profit sorry i'm not showing you all my workings here so this is what she's invested that's the, her sort of total return minus her investments this is her profit but it didn't just ask for her profit, it asked for the percentage. So what you have to say, well, her profit percentage is how much she gets out as profit, okay, over how much she put in, okay, times by 100, because we want a percentage. Put that into your calculator. Be careful to type it in correctly. It gives you 17.6319%. At the front of this exam, it says, please round off to one decimal place. 
So that is equivalent to this as a return. Okay, so work very carefully there when you're doing these questions. It's all about interpreting, making sure that you're understanding what's going on, the matching principle, work slowly, methodically, think about what you're doing. Biggest thing with finance is you need to be comfortable with your calculator work and putting in your brackets correctly. Okay, let's go into our next question with finance. Right, Colleen took a bank loan of 300,000 rand at the beginning of the same year as she bought her first 10 shares. So it's still the same scenario, right? Still, Colleen, we're sort of probably going to have to leverage our answer in the previous question to answer this question, right? Um, so a same year that she bought her first 10 shares indicated in A and paid back the loan through monthly payments. So this one's monthly, right? That's interesting because before it was quarterly, so we need to maybe think about is there any sort of adjustments we need to make? Her first repayment was made at the end of January of the first year. So again, right, we have monthly installments and it's in arrears. It's not in advance, so we don't have to make any adjustments. The bank offered her an interest rate of 9.5% per annum compounded monthly. Wonderful. They've given us this monthly interest rate so we don't have to convert it because it matches our um, uh, frequency of payment. If she sold her shares at the end of the five-year period based on the minimum interest rate, would she be able to pay the balance of her loan at that stage? So what we need to do here, there's a number of things we need to do. Firstly, we need to work out what was her installments. So what, what are her monthly installments? Because we can't really work out anything until we know her monthly installments. So we know that she took out a loan, right? And the present value of that loan is 300K. So we should be thinking, okay, I know that it's an annuity, but I'm not going to use the future value because I don't know what the future value is and I don't want to know, right? I only have the present value. So I'm going to use this present value formula to find out what it is she's paying each month, right, to pay off this loan. I'm going to do that. That's going to be the first thing I do. That gives me a bit of clarity because then I can say, well, at the five-year mark, how much does she owe? How much has she paid off? And then would the shares cover the difference in the outstanding balance? But I can't do any of that unless I know how much she still needs to, um, that she's paying each month. So we're figuring out X. Her present value is this. K1 minus, be careful of your brackets here, right? It's going to be 0 0.095 over 12, right? How many years is it that she's doing this, right? She's doing it for 15 years. So we have to say 15, but... We have to say times by 12. Why do we say times by 12? Well, because it is monthly, right? And then put this over here like that, and you're done. So now, to get your x value, you say this here, divided by this whole bracket, put that into your calculator, and your x value that you'll get is 3132.674049. Now you could be saying, jeepers, marks like that is a lot of decimals. It is, but remember, we don't want to round off our decimals until the end. That's general, like a general rule. Don't round off your decimals until the end. If you don't want to write these off, you can put a dot, 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 but store it in your calculator, right, so that you can use it later. Just as a note, how do you store a value? So let's say I have 56. I go shift, store, and then I choose a letter. So I'm going to make it with A. Then whenever I press A, it gives me 56. Okay, so that's a useful thing to note. Then we want to say, okay, this is what she's paying each month, right? That's what she's paying each month. But now we at time five, okay? So now we're at the end of the five years. How much would this 300K have accumulated to, right? How much would that have accumulated to? So we're gonna say, okay, at time five, this 300,000, if I accumulated it at my rate here, okay, what would it be worth? Okay, so it's basically saying this is the amount of time that the bank has foregone using this money and it would have earned the interest, right? So how much would that have been? Put that into your calculator and you would get this amount here. Okay, so that's how much that 300k would be worth at time five. But remember also at time five, she's been paying off now every month this amount. So let's go work out the future value, right? And when I say future value, I mean, future value at time five, right, of what she's been paying for all this time. So your future value, right, if you remember from your formula sheet, okay, this is the formula there. You're going to say, well, 
we know that it's x 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over i. So I'm going to say, okay, I know that she's been paying off this amount here. Look how I include all of my decimals. Okay, that's how much she's been paying each month. My interest rate is um, the same as one as I've been using. This is now though over five years. Okay, 0 0.095 over 12. Perfect. Put that into your calculator and it tells you that at time five, this is how much she has paid off. Okay, so this is how much she would have owed if she hadn't been paying off anything, right, over that period. But of that amount, this is how much she's paid off. Okay, so if you say what's owed minus what she's paid off, that would be your outstanding balance, right? So I'm just going to call this one, and I'm going to call that two. So I'm going to say my outstanding balance equals one minus two. So what does she have left that she needs to pay? She needs to pay this this much right that's how much she has to pay at time five that's her outstanding balance at time five okay that's what she needs to pay off in order to basically cancel her loan or to have her loan um fully paid up so then we're saying what did the what did the question actually ask us to do because now we've done so many calculations we kind of don't know where we're at but let's go look it says if she sold her shares at the end of the five years, based on the minimum interest rate, would she be able to pay the balance of her loan at that stage? Well, what, did her, what were her shares, what were they valued at at time five? They were valued at this, okay? So we'd say here, her shares, right, shares at time five were equal to 205. Just flip the page over, right, so 205, um, 973.485 okay that's what they were valued at now you should be able to see that she owes more than her shares are worth right put this into your calculator and you'd actually see that she has a shortfall right of 36,000 at time 5 right so therefore no right? She would not be able to pay, right? She would not be able to pay off her debt to the bank because her shares wouldn't have accumulated to a sufficient amount. If she got more than the minimum interest rate, 100%, maybe she would be able to pay it off, but not at the minimum interest rate. And that's what it wants you to show. Okay, so think about this very logically. Questions like this need to be broken down, okay? You need to say, okay, she's paying this amount off. How much is she paying per month? How much would the loan have accumulated to at time five. How much of that has she paid off? How much were her shares worth? Are they equal to the amount that she still needs to pay off? No, they were less. Therefore, she is still in debt to the bank. That's the kind of logic you need to work through. Okay, I hope that was helpful.